Good morning, Cold Girl Rockers. I'm Angela and I'm with you for the next hour. Um, I hope you've had a wonderful week and um, I'm going to be sharing with you why I'm taking one of the sleeves off this. I've already taken one sleeve off already. So we're going to be do it today. I'm going to be taking things off this jumper and I'm also going to show you what happens when you go to an event yarn event and you don't actually remember everything that you've got at home all right so um i hope that you've had as i said i hope you've had a lovely week you know the rules hope you've got a little drinky winky um i've got a nice fresh cup of tea here and uh, what do i need for today's session well i need some um um scissors to unpick the arms on my project and yes this is what i've done i you know i did this illusion jumper some time ago it's way 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 too big again um and the arms are so blinking long because what i forgot to do was allow for the um what is it the you know what i mean that bit there that goes halfway down your arm why is it that whenever we do these lovely looking jumpers they're not uh, should we say very well structured they're very loose and floppy uh, so anyway that's what i'm doing i'm taking the sleeves off and i've got two sleeves that i need to re-knit um and i'm gonna knit them at the same time i can't be bothered to, to do them um separately so i just need them both the same length i need to make them really too short because i know once you put the jumper on it's going to hang and um it's just one of these um drop sleeves and do you know what i think that the next the next garment i make is either going to be a top down with a little bit of structure or it's going to be the old-fashioned one with setting sleeves so um oh can you not hear me if you can't hear me what i'm going to have to do is run into the house let me know if can everybody hear me is that all right let me know if you can hear me if not <laughs> i'm gonna move <laughs> um oh that's fine thank you brigitte brigitte says that she can hear me uh thank you so much deborah um i'm not too sure if you just want to refresh your ipad go out and come back in i was just making sure it wasn't me so what have you been doing this week if you have finished anything or even if it's something from the past, let us know what you've been working on um, or a garment that you really, really love. Um, I posted one in our Facebook group. That's Facebook. Sorry, that's Goggle Frogs Craft and Natter. I put something in there a little while ago um, just to share something with you because I absolutely love the label and we haven't had a little chuckle about the label and that item um, of clothing that i knit it was a scarf i think it was a workday scarf but it was the longest workday scarf in the world so let's say some good mornings we're going to be perfectly formed but a little um lower numbers i know the numbers are going um up and down at the moment and i think that's because people are trying to rejoin so just to say good morning judy lovely to see you Good morning, Grace. Absolutely lovely to see you. And hello, Brigitte. And hello, Amber. And I know there were a few more people, but um, people are coming. And hello, Deborah. So I'm sorry um, if I can't see everything. I'm on my own with you today. So, um, and I have got a funny story. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to catch up on chat. Um, and hello to everyone on replay. You are going to hear me read out the chat because you're not going to be able to see the chat box on the replay. And if you're watching us on YouTube as well, I, again, I'll be reading out the chat. So you know what we're talking about. So Brigitte says, good morning, peeps. And it's 258, 258 shows. Isn't that amazing? And uh, Grace says, good morning. Hello, Grace. Trisha says, morning, folks. Judy says, morning, everyone. Deborah says, morning. Morning, all. I can see you, Angela, but not hear you. I'm not sure if it's my iPad. Brigitte says, yes, that she can hear me. And Grace can and Judy can. Amber says, good morning, everyone making baby booties for co-workers isn't that amazing and it's uh it's 
it's interesting isn't it hello amber in new york um i think we do use the term co-workers in the uk in, in the uk um uh, but colleagues is what we tend to say but i think certain parts of the uk have gone to using the term co-workers as well so um i love noticing the little differences and nuances so thank you so much and deborah says it's sorted now it was the internet she thinks so um robert has messaged me this morning to say that he has sorted out this morning's music so are you as interested as i am to know what our musical interlude is today so i'm just going to play that now for you so sit back with your cup of tea coffee water whatever it is and enjoy um so here we go peeps no i've no idea what it is what I will say is it's raining outside. It's starting to spot with rain. It's pretty cold. I dropped my husband off at the train station about six o'clock this morning. And um, as we were leaving the house, I said, where's your coat? We said, well, it's warm. I said, it's not today. It's going to start raining. He said, are you sure? Anyway, I ran in, got his coat for him. And I was so glad because by 8.30, it was raining everywhere in the south of the UK. So here we go. We've got a little bit of um, sunshine hopefully coming with the music. So enjoy and uh, do a little bit of knitting while you listen. Let me hit the right button as well now. No idea what year. I think it was the 80s was it the 80s um and uh yes so pointer sisters and jump it was one of those really iconic um and what really made me smile was no matter how much you may have liked that tune um if i take what uh, brigitte said that that was one of the warm-up tunes when she went to dance size Although no jumping around for her, for me, especially not today. I hope you're okay and not injured. Um, however, I think it became the bane of everybody's life because for some reason, every single dance teacher, exercise teacher, whatever group you went to, that was in there, wasn't it? So it was absolutely everywhere. And the fact that you used to go in with leotards and those, you know, what, whatever stuff we wore it was no longer pleasurable was it but you could you used to come out of there all sweaty and all hurting but you had to put on a big smiley face and say that was fabulous thank you very much i was really happy that i spent that money with you um and then sit in your car and do you know what me and a friend in the past um we used to go this is so funny we used to go to it was a ladies night and i don't know if anybody remembers at watford baths um like swimming baths um and they had an indoor slide and stuff on i think it was a wednesday night or a tuesday night we used to go there and say you know we're going to do lots of swimming the fact that there were all of these wave pools in there you didn't actually swim very much so we used to sit there for an hour and a half two hours swimming or telling ourselves that we're exercising and swimming and then we used to leave and say oh we've had a really good day haven't we we had a really good evening and then we used to go to this chinese restaurant that was eat as much as you want <laughs> so things like jump i think they've been used so much in all of these exercise classes it always makes me laugh because the number of people who if you go swimming you come out even when you were a child you used to go swimming with school didn't you and then before you got on the, uh, so you you were all sort of wet, hair still wet, um, you've been for a swim, you've maybe got a certificate, etc. But what's the one thing that you got as you were coming out? A hot chocolate and a bag of crisps. That's what they had, isn't it? There were no healthy snacks when we were younger. And uh, whenever I used to go to this blooming thing on a Wednesday or a Tuesday or a Wednesday night, let me know if anyone else went there to Watford. Um, I don't even know what it was called, but it was it was bulldozed, of course, and it's now flats. I wouldn't even know whereabouts it was in Watford, but we used to go to this Chinese restaurant, eat as much as you like. It was lovely. And my favourite, my favourite bit, can you imagine? 
because you could order as many um, appetizers as you want and when they're gone you could order more appetizers then he had your crispy duck or your crispy vegetables then he had or oh, crispy lamb yeah they did that and then as many main courses as you wanted and of course as the obligatory desserts that you never touch do you it's the it's the deep fried bananas <laughs> the toffee bananas <laughs> so anyway out of all of it the thing that we used to order loads and loads of portions of were the deep fried cauliflower florets they were out of this world they're absolutely amazing i think they had some spice or some pepper so um like this jump what what is that about a little ditty a little tune and you know you've had to do those what were those step exercises where you used to have one of those steps and you used to have to go running and jumping across etc so we used to go to that but um yeah the one the one day of the week which was really pleasurable actually was a bit of a swim in a wave pool go down a slide come splashing into the bottom it was all females in the pool so that was really nice um and i go for a nice big chinese afterwards so um there we go so anyway i hope um that brought a smile to your face as well but yeah that that jump i just remember from step classes they always put that on <laughs> Reasons. I just can't I can't enjoy it anymore I associate it with going to a blooming step class that I absolutely hated but um it was when I first gone down south and uh trying to keep, get fit etc uh so that's why I went but oh my word why did they play that one they ruined that tune didn't they so uh anyway um yeah that's that uh so Tracy says morning I've actually made made it absolutely brilliant to see you here tracy thank you for joining us um and georgia says morning sorry i'm late you are never ever late for goggle frogs that's why we have an automatic replay that goes out to you and if you want to watch it you can if you don't want to you just catch what it catches when you can so don't worry about that deborah says love this track trying to think uh, which it film it featured in but can't i don't know all I remember is those horrible step classes that I used to go to and there was always jumping it and it was the one where you had to go from one side of the blooming step to the other side of the step. It was awful. And I always thought I was going to either fall off or break something. Uh, <laughs> uh, Tracy, this must be the longest song ever. Hence why I hated it. You know, when something's two and a half minutes, you don't mind, do you? When you're doing like some, some step movement from one side of the step to the other but whoa that was too long georgie says what's the chinese restaurants called the four seasons down market street georgie i don't know i don't even know where this blinking place was but i do remember back in the day and we are talking oh how old would i be early 20s so we're talking what 28 years ago something like that um so there weren't lots of eat as much as you want, not like there are now. Um, and it was one where there was just this massive, massive, massive like um, menu. And you can just order everything as fresh as you wanted. It was great. And Brigitte says, I can't think of many more things. I, I couldn't fancy less than a deep fried <laughs> sugary banana. <laughs> I know. But guess what? I had copious amounts of this deep fried blinking cauliflower because it was just lovely um but hey ho yeah the the deep fried sugary banana i always loved the, i always loved the smell of them i always loved the thought of them and i'd have one bite and i'd just think oh no um and another thing from back in the day do you remember and i'm still on picking my jumper do you remember back in the day if you went to a chinese restaurant they used to bring quarters of oranges after. Forget any other dessert. I just wanted the oranges and they were cut up and you suck them in your mouth and like they were absolutely amazing. Um, and I do think, you know, uh, over the years, as we have um, had our taste buds um, open to new tastes, etc. Wow, I just remember, you know, last night I had liver and mashed potato and cabbage and sprouts and broccoli and stuff like that and wow look at this food sweet and sour and Sichuan and oh my word I, I was just overwhelmed with these taste sensations so um yeah absolutely loved it 
I struggle a little bit now because there's a lot of gluten in stuff, but there's certain restaurants that I can go to, uh, which is great. Um, so I'm still doing this. So we've got a little bit open, but what is it about when you sew a jumper up? When you sew a jumper up and you sew that arm on, you think, I want it to last. I don't want it to come off. <laughs> and then when you have to unpick it, it does take a little while, doesn't it? So um, I might leave that for a little bit later. But I'm going to tell you another story. Okay, some time ago, you will remember myself and Robert went to um, a wool fair down south somewhere. Well, it was around the M25 and go down south a little bit. And I, I still got my little bag. I haven't used much out of it at all. And I got some little... Um, I got this, which is the Spl Slow Exposure Shawl, and that's from the cat lady who is, let me remember her name, um, Anne Caitlin Baig. Um, so it's pretty simple. And then I got this Collider Catty, and the it's like a kaleidoscope with little different little cat things. And then I also bought this, this yarn tellier. And as we mentioned, Louisa Harding gave us the most amazing little one-to-one -one session where she told us how she actually put those little beads on. Uh, me and Robert were just so happy uh, that she showed us how to do it with a very, 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 very fine needle. We bought some of her things. So I was over the moon with that, wasn't I? And I've got the wool that I'm going to do this in. And it's like a fuchsia colour that I bought ages ago. And so yada, yada, yada. And then I picked up a book out of my collection, Yarn Tellia. And I bought this in my local yarn shop when Louisa Harding went there. And as I was looking through this, I suddenly thought, like, there's one picture there. You're not going to be able to see this because of the colour, are you? It's going to be really hard. However, really amazing that when something's done in a different colour, like that's done in a very, very pale, and um, it's either a pale grey or a pale blue, but it's the same blinking pattern. <laughs> But that one there doesn't have the little bits on. And what they've also done, which you probably can't see, but if I do it here, you can see where all of those buttons are. The interesting thing about Louisa Harding designs, and if you ever, if ever, ever she's at an event, please just go and talk to her and, and just get inspired by her because she's amazing. So as well as having something that looks that beautiful on the back, when you look here, what she does is that though those buttons, you might think, why have you got buttons there? Why don't you just, um, you know, sew it up? They move to the front and then you have something that looks like almost like a cardigan shawl. Um, and I don't think, no, inside it, there isn't the pictures, but honestly, that that there moves to the middle. And what you've got is all of those hearts down that side and also down that side. And her designs are really, really unique that she, she thinks, how else can you wear it? So it's not just to be over the shoulder. Um, so yeah, I've actually got this pattern twice now. Once in the book, which may I add, is signed. <laughs> So my book signed. And then the next time I met her, when I bought a pattern that I didn't realise I had, but she gave me a free lesson in how to apply the uh, beads, which is just incredible. So um, if I have a look through here, I might be able to show you. Um, you might be able to see this one. Can you see how? Uh, no, I need something a darker colour, don't I, to show you. But honestly, her stuff is so, so, so unique. It's really, really good. Uh, love the stuff. Let's see if there's a picture at all with it down the front so I can show you. No, there's not going to be now. I'll try and show you this other one. 
and see if I get it far enough away you'll be able to see what I mean um yeah so so if I get that far enough away that's what I mean by those buttons will go down the middle and it will look like a jacket like a almost like a waistcoat or a shawl depending on how big you are and the other thing that Louisa Harding says and I am taking heed of her words the reason why we don't wear lots of our creations is because we make them too big and it's one thing if you're making something out of cloth because it doesn't give but when you're making something out of wool it gives and it moves and it stretches etc but because a lot of the time we we like to hide our curves uh, that's why we end up doing these sort of things like taking the arms off to redo them thinking how on earth am i going to make this work um but i will do i will make it work and now the weather's changing out there um yeah i, I want to wear the jumper <laughs> so that's my little um i don't know how much that was um i like it i'll i'd have bought it anyway because it looks so different in a different color and this one's actually leading with having beads in whereas that one didn't and i wouldn't have made that one ever because i'm not a pale color sort of person so um yeah really good in the end so i thought i'd tell you that so i have a book that's signed and i've also got a pattern <laughs> from her um yeah so anyway brigitte says when she went to a chinese restaurant in germany with her friends in Bushel, Bushelt, uh, there was a notice that if you piled your plate and left a lot of it to go for the next course, you would be billed five euros for every plate with food left on. Love, love, love that. Um, yeah, it, it's weird, isn't it? Whenever I go to these restaurants, I eat the appetizers, I love them, I love picking lots and lots of little things. I'll probably have the duck. But then when you get onto the main course, it's just, you know what, I've had enough now. But we did go out yesterday. I met a friend in London and we went to, um, it's actually a vegan restaurant in Covent Garden. Um, and it was quite different because last time we went there, all alcohol there was um, alcohol free. Uh, so whilst they had gin and tonics, they were alcohol free gin and tonics. The Prosecco was alcohol free. Everything was alcohol free. And there was actually alcohol there yesterday, so I did have a gin and tonic, which was really unusual. Um, well, not unusual to have a gin and tonic, but unusual to have it there. But we had the most amazing food. We had um, a mock fish stew, which was more like a beautiful curry without spice, uh, like tofu. And we had, uh, what's oh, what's the other thing? I can't remember what the other thing was. Bread, is it breadfruit? I think it's breadfruit. Uh, this huge pile of, I have no idea what, but the walnuts and all sorts in it, it was really, really good. So uh, really nice going out and being able to eat gluten-free, proper gluten-free without, oh, there's one or two things on the menu that you might possibly be able to have. The fact that so much of it we could have. So that was really good. And then on the way home, I called into Neil's Yard Cheese Shop. And can I just say that I picked up some cheese yesterday that is better than, I think, any cheese I've eaten in years. It was out of this world, absolutely amazing. Uh, so I had that and an, up and an apple for my supper. <laughs> it was really, really good. Um, so, yeah. Oh, hang on a minute. Update, update alert, update alert. alert. So Judy says, congr sorry, congratulations to those who arranged the event at Marion's last week. Lovely to see everyone. I understand £500 was raised. Well done. Well, on, was it Wednesday night, Marion and Robert said it was about 350 so if that's gone up to 500 that's amazing so well done yeah to robert to helen um to marion for hosting it and everybody else and for that wonderful family who gifted all of that stuff amazing and yes yes my stuff is still here my stuff is still here 
and other things down there and patterns that I got. So it's really great when we redistribute um, wool that hasn't been used. Uh, so that's brilliant. So well done to everybody. Um, so has anybody bought any wool this week? I haven't been anywhere near a wool shop. <laughs> In fact, Marion's garden and her garage it's the most it, that's the most wool i've bought in a in a long long time because there is just i i, I came to um i came to a decision the other day that i am actually going to get rid of some of my wool and i thought wool that i have bought over the years and not necessarily bought it thought Oh, that's a nice colour. I'll do something with it one day. But I've got so much wool that, do you know what? A lot of it I don't think I'm going to use. So I actually think I'm going to get some, rid of quite a bit of it. Um, and it was really weird. Um, there was some that I knitted a cardigan in. And I started to crochet with it. The day, and I just thought, I don't like the feel of it anymore. Um, and I was going to do a blanket. Um, so I think uh, I need to have some real serious choices made um, about some of the wool in my stash. And I think it comes down to, um, you know, even if that's going to be a blanket, what does it feel like against my skin? And do I like the way how it feels? And um, yeah, so I think I'm going to be getting rid of a little bit, which I, I don't like because a lot of them, I love the colour but I don't love the um, feel or I love the feel and I don't love the colour or some things I bought because they're a total bargain. Um, and then I realised that, do you know what? One skin, if it costs a lot of money, it, it's nice to next to my skin. Um, I've got some, I have got some, I've got a bag of mohair or rather fake mohair that I inherited from my late auntie and on the packet i think there's six or eight balls and it says one pound a pack so that whole bag was um a pound and it's a lovely color it's a, a light greeny blue so i think i'm going to keep that one because i want to see how it knits up um and i want you know when you just think we the fashions at the moment and and you have to watch the fashion switch don't you um so when you look at the fashions, we've got a lot of 80s stuff coming back. We've got a little glimmer of ankle warmers, a little bit of shoulder pads. And I just keep thinking at some point, mohair is going to come back. And I know I got rid of all of my proper mohair because I can't put it anywhere near my skin. Um, but I've got this other one. I thought, oh, all of those fluffy jumpers that we used to wear with the cobalt blue skirts, etc. Um a cobalt blue is really quite in. And I know that Robert showed us for a few bags in John Lewis that were psychedelic colours. Um, not the psychedelic from the 90s, but, you know, from the, um, the, the greens. And no, it was orange and pink and yellow, I think, weren't, weren't it? Some rather expensive bags. Were they mulberry or something? So I'm just thinking, do you know what? We might have a little bit of... Um, of mohair coming back at some point those fluffy cardigans so i think i might do one because they they don't take long to do do they because you do them on really big needles and um so i think that might be quite good the fact that hopefully it won't get up my nose but we'll see um and judy says she had that second hand from a light reliable source still well done well fabulous because I know when I spoke to, when we spoke to Helen, she said still waiting for a few things to come in. So I think a few people said, "Oh, I want X," or um, you know, they, they wanted to look at certain things. So that is absolutely amazing. So that's five hundred pounds. Um, incredible, well done. And I am continuing to unpick these arms, and I will re knit them at some point. But I thought that jumper is not sitting there. As if it's a finished garment because it's not i can't wear it and i have to amend it again <laughs> but that's one of the things that you find isn't it i i made this jumper because 
I knew that the like it's an illusion jumper but if you look at that it, it's just a beautiful front absolutely beautiful front and it's really quite long and the wool it's a stylecraft cotton linen uh linen linen drape that's what i've made and in i believe peacock and it's really really heavy it's a really heavy one so you don't if you've got jump um jeans on and a and a little top underneath sometimes a jumper will get stuck on it won't it this is so heavy it's gonna fall really well but the issue with that is you don't necessarily know how the rest of the garment's gonna gonna look so the 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 shoulders come down here more and the sleeves are very heavy and extend more so you actually have to make them too short for your body for them to end up the right length okay uh, but we only find these things out once we start creating with different wools and putting them on different patterns. But I love this this wool. Um, I love the colour. I love how it feels. It's one of those that um, I, I love heavy linen, um, not light linen, but heavy linen. Uh, I think it's lovely. Um, so I can't wait to finish it and actually wear it. So one of these shows, I will actually put the jumper on. But you know, as soon as I finish it, what's going to happen to the weather? <laughs> the weather will get better again. Got so many knots in it. You know, when you finish off and think, no, I'll just do another couple of knots um, to make sure that it never comes. <sighs> oh, dear. And I'm sat here trying to open it all. There we go right look at the time 37 so let's have a quick look at facebook and see what's happening let me uh just have a look at facebook for us right uh right i've just done that so let's have a quick look through i don't there wasn't really much in at all earlier when i looked but let's see i know i've put a couple of things on there one thing on there right okay let's have a quick look sorry folks because i'm on my own now i'm not going to be able to see chat so i will try and flick back um right okay um so Brigitte is asking, good morning, Google Froggers. Does anyone else have problems accessing Google search engine on t or TV apps on? Can't play BBC iPlayer, etc. on the mobile. Thought I could solve a problem by offloading the app and reinstall, but get told I can't reinstall. Try later. Um, stuck in my chair, spotting one if, if Rod's spare knee supports and walking stick within reach. Oh, no. I am so sorry, Brigitte. Um, I didn't realise you twisted your knee. Um, is there an, anything that I can do? Do you need any shopping, dropping off? Let me know. And I'm just going to have a look. It was BBC iPlayer. Let me have a quick look and see if I can play on mine. Well, um, it's taken a little while because we've got so much heavy usage on our internet and I'm at the bottom of the garden. So it's currently I've I've currently got a circle going round and round, but I don't know if that's my internet. Um Ah, that could be my internet. Um, so if anybody else knows, can you let me know? If not, I will look straight after. Um, there are a couple of comments there as well. Um, so I hope that it is uh, better soon and I will double check once I'm close to the house. Um, Deborah says, started this blanket last night, love the colours, but I think it could be a bit of a challenge. Oh, oh my word. Um, 
do you know what i've got an incredible incredible um uh, se there's 78 triangles and it has been finished what two years now all the triangles but to try and so crochet them together which is what i want to do rather than sewing them together but do you know what i think i am just going to bite the bullet and actually sew the blinking things up because that has been, just been sitting there for too too long now too too long so my my whole focus is on finishing things at the moment that blanket is gorgeous absolutely beautiful um i love it um the only thing that i would find is um if you try and do th put them all together at the end it just takes forever doesn't it uh but you have to do it that way but it, it's lovely it's going to be a labor of love <laughs> it's going to be a labor of love but it's lovely and i love the border around that as well and the fact that they're all quite unique and different um yeah that's lovely i love that one um i just put this on early because it's show it off saturday so this was a workday cardigan that I finished ages and ages ago. That's it all rolled up. Um, that's it. Once I'd finished one of the skeins. So I then had to source another skein. Didn't know if it was the same dye lot. Um, and it arrived and it was fine. I've barely worn it, but that is the longest workday scarf in history. It is really, really, really long. And on this... Um, I'm not going to pronounce it, not on a Saturday morning, <laughs> but knitting can be addictive was on the sign. And I just love it's an um, Admiral cap print and um, Admiral um, wool is lovely. I do love it. And that's the colour that I got. Um, but it is just lovely. And that knitting can be addictive. I thought I know we've seen it before, but we need to see that little label ever so often, don't we? which is great um and this was the wordplay wednesday i think there's been a few more comments so i'm gonna put in there so i'm gonna read some of them out now so i think we'd got to who was oops it is eh? here it is oops it is eh? what have i done sorry There we go. Oops. My screen's going a little bit funny, but we'll get there in the end. Right. We're back on this now. Back in the game, as they say. Um, so Linda says, never. So the, the statement was, never have i ever and we read a lot of them out the other night but linda says never have i had so much stash but i'm trying to use it up uh, that's what i said but there's a, a an extra bag arrived down there tracy says i said i have too much yarn in my stash <laughs> so never have i ever not picked up my knitting until tuesday when it was so hot uh never oh and Anastasia says never has she ever been so um desperate for yarn and that's the problem at the moment certainly with the eu thing whilst everything should work properly um it's not working as easily as it could do so there's um it's a bit harder to get yarn from abroad at the moment as well um so Helen said, never have I ever discovered yarn that I forgot about. Of course I have. Uh, Marion had said, never have I ever been given yarn for the moment of time. And my stash of yarn is a little more than I can ever imagine. Uh, Rebecca said, never have I ever knowingly been out of yarn. No. Georgie says, never have I ever stopped loving yarn. Dawn says, never have I ever bought wool I didn't need. Oh, uh, I'd said, not known every hiding place that I have for yarn. Never have I ever been in a yarn shop and come out empty-handed from Louise. Brigitte says, never, ever have I thought that too much stash was bad for you. It's not, is it? Um, Amber says, not found a creative way to wind my hanks into balls of yarn. 
did I tell you I found a new use for the steering wheel of my car? <laughs> it makes a fantastic yarn swift if you're sitting in the car and waiting for something. That's hilarious. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, do you know what? Um, I'm going to do that. I am because I try and stick it round my knees normally and um, I, I get into all of a mess. Uh, actually, no, what normally happens is Robert puts it into lovely little um, cakes for me. Uh, but I will try that. Uh, Kate says, never have I ever sat on a sheep. Oh, actually, I have. Heather says, never have I ever finished about 90% of projects. Snap. Um, and Robert has been really, really, really good. He, the Etsy shop is now up, open and fully stocked. Um, so yeah, that's on there. And Deborah says, welcome to the Etsy community because Deborah is an Etsy um, entrepreneur and she sells all those beautiful coloured, um, you know, scrubby things um, that are beautiful on Etsy. So well done to you. Um, and it's so good. I, I can do normal websites, but Etsy, it was just, oh. Um, and then well, that's, that's a pick from me yesterday. Too hot to knit on the train. I sat there and I thought, do you know what? No. Um, and I just put however me thinks it's all matching. So my handbag, my lipstick, my knitting, and my dress were all sort of the same shades, weren't they? So it was quite funny. Um, and yeah, after goggles the other night, that's who was staring at me. So Spodgy Dodgy was just sat at the door, sitting there because we've got the office bit and then we've got the garage bit. So Spodgy Dodgy was just looking at me. And Spodgy Dodgy um, stayed in the house all night last night, which meant I had to stay on this city just in case. Um, and he's sitting in a little box outside. Um, so it's turned cold, hasn't it? And suddenly Spodgy's around and Actually, I'll, I'll sit in that house if I can do, please. And um, I really don't want to move outside. It's all rainy. Uh, but when it's nice and warm, she loves being outside. Uh, yeah. So this is something for some of you. And it, it's strange, isn't it? We've just got over the football. And then, and, and we had Wimbledon. And now we've got the Olympics. And just think, Wow, there are there are so many incredible people at the moment competing against each other. So there's the Ravelinic Games starting. Is that the end of this week? So if you want to be part of that, um, check out the Ravelry group uh, uh, for the KCG. Um, and yeah, and you can join the team. So have a look if you'd like to. And thank you so much, Rebecca, for letting us know about that. Uh, that was from last week. I, oh, did we show that? Oh, look at this. Baby booties for her co-workers baby shower. They are beautiful. Thank you so much for showing that. Um, I've never actually made booties in my life. Maybe I should at some point. Um, and then we all met this little chap. This is, remember, a gnomer is, not, is for life, not just for Christmas. I can't... I don't like the word gnome, so I call them gnomas, uh, and that is beautiful. And Robert proudly showed that little chap uh, the other night. So uh, I think we're up to date now. Yes, I think we are. So let's go back um, and see. Um, yeah, so Brigitte, we're all really, 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 really concerned about you. I hope your knee isn't too bad. Do you need me to pop round and try and sort out your iPad? If you do, I will happily pop round, come to the door um, with the face mask on at um, early afternoon, if you would like me to. Um, uh, all right, Brigitte says that's the same circle I get on the screen, Angela. The, um, Right, okay, so I'll try again in the house because I know I've got super duper broadband in there. It's just some few meters away from it at the moment. Um, so I'll double check and let you know. Um, and the Ari, uh, she, Brigitte also says the Ari blanket looks fabulous. Good old granny squares. Yes, fabulous granny squares. That It does look lovely. Um, and Tracy says that she was looking at doing that blanket too. Mm. 
and Amber says Brigitte to get well soon. We're all wishing you uh, to get well soon. Um, yeah, hopefully. If you need anything, if you need any aloe gel or if any, uh, what's the other CBD um, stuff? Because that's good. If you use anything like that, let me know and uh, you can use some. Um, but <sighs> rest. And then when it's not too painful, just starting to make sure it doesn't seize up. Is um, But it's, it's awful, isn't it, when you've injured yourself. So no one's bought any new wool. <laughs> well, we know that Robert's working today and Marion is on her holly jollies, isn't she? So she's gone off and she's having a lovely, lovely trip a few days away um up in the lakes um so we were and and i think one thing that may happen is she ordered some wool before she went away from canada which is lovely um but i think she might get some wool when she's away for a few days what's the betting uh well the betting will be that she won't buy any wool if it's not local wool um because i do know was it is it Portugal that she went to or I always remember saying that she went to a wool shop and when she went in there <clears throat> there was Katia but there was absolutely no local wool and that's what she loves doing doesn't she if she whenever she stops in a different port um, or a different country she likes to go to the wool shop and buy something inspirational from there um, so let's see what she buys because I think she may be buying something beautiful um let's let's hope they do um oh right so i've nearly got the other one off <laughs> and then i've do you know what it's such a palaver isn't it because you take this off so where's that one so i've taken that one off then you've got to take all of this undo this haven't you which is uh great then you've got to take it back and i was thinking shall i just take it part way and i thought no because this I actually need, for once in my life, I need a tighter cast on around the cuff. Um, and I'm actually going to do this on a much, much smaller needle um, around the cuff, just so it's got some more structure. <clears throat> I don't want to do the whole sleeve um, on a much, much smaller needle because then it will look a bit strange. Uh, but I'm going to eat just those things. We'll see um I'll, I'll make i'll make it work um but yeah this is what happens isn't it in the good old-fashioned days you didn't have the choice so if it said dk it was dk <coughs> it, you know if you if it said worsted it was worsted and then we have the equivalent of light dks and quite chunky dks the same in worsted so back in the days like 50 years ago there just wasn't the variety of different walls, whereas now there is. Um, so when we make something, this is DK. It's a DK linen. <clears throat> but very, very different to what it was knitted in, which I think could have been just a normal DK, a bouncy DK. Um, but I just love the fact that it was so heavy and would hang, would, would hang rather than clinging. And I think with some jumpers and some shapes, when they can be a little bit, um, you don't want to, them to cling in certain areas. Uh, so that's why I chose this one for this. But it does mean that um, it, it's quite heavy. So it does pull. Uh, yeah. And Tracy says, oh, Tracy, thank you so much. She's checked and she said it's working, Brigitte. Um, so it may be that... Um, have you tried it without demio running um if not let us know and i can always pop around later if you'd like me to, to see if i can get it working i'm not like robert though i'm not the it genius um but you've installed you've um uh uh I shall get on to BT later, as now told. There's no internet connection. Oh, there is, as Goggle Frogs is working on the laptop. 
knee's a bit better today, thankfully, and don't know how I did it. Oh, dear. Sometimes things just go, don't they? Um, yeah. Uh, Brigitte says don't have an iPad, just mobile and the laptop. So let's let's see if it comes back. Sometimes it may be that um, once we stop goggle frogs, then it will come back. But um, just wondering, I know that it's, you're using your internet. Check that the, it is definitely connected to the internet um, and not just on your mobile. Um, and I don't know if there's a problem with BT. If you if you have like um oh two um not check your your mobile thing as well that it's definitely connected and we'll we'll go from there. Oh my word! It's nearly eleven o'clock. It's fifty six. I haven't even finished my cup of tea yet. Mm. So for today, I've got one. I've got um need to unpick the sleeves. Not doing too bad now. It's just where on certain parts of the, the sleeves, you just do extra stitches, don't you? <laughs> just so that they're very, very secure. Um, so I've almost taken these off. Then I'll take them back. Then I'll start knitting them on sl smaller needles. But in order to do that, I've got to find the pattern, haven't I? Although the pattern. Can just work it from this really um to be honest my own sleeves would be better than this sleeve that i did <laughs> working from the pattern um so i just need to make it much 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 um <clears throat> tighter around the wrist so it is because i don't i don't like baggy um uh, um sleeves i don't mind the bagger here but I, I like that the cuff is the cuff's quite tight. Um, so that's what I'm doing. So almost unpicked one of them, thankfully. And then the second one's nearly off. And then we can start again. So how quickly can somebody do two sleeves and reattach them to the jumper? Do you want to say now whether you think I'm going to be wearing the new jumper on Monday or whether you think... I won't have even finished one on. So let us know and we'll have a little bit of a, a, a little bit, bit of a bet for Monday, won't we? Um, so let's see if I actually get this jumper finished or not. Um, I think we're going to go a do a little bit of a trip out again. Need some veggies. Um, oh, do I need veggies? But it's market day today, isn't it? So I always like going to, you know, go to get some nice fresh veggies and loads of fruit. So you haven't got that much in the house, um, fruit-wise. Um, and it was, oh, right. So so it's going back to the internet. Brigitte says it was not working long before Demio started. Okay, just check that you are connected to the, the Wi-Fi, the internet on that, and it's not just trying to run off you. Your mobile data in case there's a problem there. Amber says, thank you, everyone, for a wonderful start to the weekend. Enjoy your knitting. Enjoy your knitting, your crochet, your cups of tea, and rest. Everybody have a rest this weekend because we've had lots and lots of hot weather. So have a good, good rest. And Brigitte says, goggle frogs would not play on the mobile. Oh, well, thank you for this morning, Angela. You did well on your own. So I will be back on Monday. Monday is a... Um, We've got a journey up north, so it could, goggle frogs could be from a service station somewhere at the side of the M1, but we'll have to get part way up the M1, probably come off. I'll probably grab a, um, what do you call it, um, probably grab a, a coffee, do Starbucks, do Starbucks from the car, do goggle from, from the car and then continue because my mum's got her hairdressing appointment on Monday. We are seeing my dad on Monday and um, we may be going to see a friend as well on Monday. So a bit of a busy day. Oh, I've got to drop something in for my uncle as well in Doncaster. So a bit of a long day on Monday, but it'll be great to see you from a service station somewhere at the side of the M1. So without further ado, 11 o'clock. Um, lovely, lovely, lovely to see you today. 
and I will see you Monday at 10am. All right, you take care. Bye.